Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, one of the conversations you have in a comic store a lot is kind of which run was better or which, you know, this comic or that comic. And uh, generally speaking, I like these conversations. I used to do them, if you remember back, this is pre-YouTube channel. I used to do this on Twitter and I'd like compare two runs. Oftentimes runs that I was hearing in the shop at the time that people were comparing like, uh, and, and it wasn't like, do you like Infinity War or do you like Infinity Crusade? It wasn't like that. It was it was more like, do you like the Infinity War series or do you like the Mutant Massacre series? Or it was like, things that were very different. Or do you like the uh, Superman death, you know, at the hands of Doomsday? Or do you like Fall of the Mutants as a series? So ones that are, that are very, very different. And, you know, it usually sparked a lot of good conversation. Unfortunately, uh, Twitter around 2016, 2017 was peak insane. And so... The, you know, very, very quickly, it would go from that kind of a fun conversation about the merits and, and pros and cons of series into a personal jihad against, you know, if you put it this way, if if a if a comic was involved that had a characters that were not male or white, then, you know, you'd have people who came, come in and would call you racist or, you know, I remember the Superman uh, Fall of the Mutants one. Uh, people are like, well, of course, you know, racists would say Superman because, you know, they don't like a black woman, of, you know, black, black woman of color or a woman of color leading a team and being the focal point to a story. So, you know, racist comic fans, literally, I mean, I'm, I, you know, I, I, just, I would say I'm not making this up, but you, you've all seen this. Um, people will lose their fucking minds. I, I think my video, by the way, on, uh, Ranma, uh, being remade as a trans allegory and is that true or not? And, you know, which which uh, I took shit initially from the anti SJW crowd for being uh, too generous. That this clearly woke cartoon is, you know. And now uh, it, the the video has been posted somewhere. If anybody knows where, <clears throat> let me know. But now I've got a bunch of people coming in. Like, what's wrong with it being a a trans allegory? It is a trans allegory. You're a bigot. You know. Anyway, you just see these comments come in, and whenever they come in more frequently on a video that's like a month old you just you know it's been published somewhere it's like listen to this asshole uh, whatever um i just i find that stuff funny uh, or not, not funny interesting i find it interesting to you know how this stuff comes around anyway um got a mail here a question of just two comics so we'll we'll try this again and you know youtube's a little bit more of a controllable situation um but uh, uh <laughs> i'm just I, I, I think these are fun conversations to have and they don't have to turn into, you know, d deeper insults about a person. I, I, every time that happens, no matter what side you're on, you know, SJW, anti SJW, whatever. Um, I, I mean, my, my initial reaction a hundred percent of the time is this is not a comic reader. This is not a comic fan. This is somebody whose entertainment is stirring up trouble has nothing to do at all with comics itself. Um, I always, I, every time. It's just, it's, it never maps. So anyway, but I'm curious to get your takes on this. So, so which is the better run? Uh, it says, Hey Perch, I would love to hear your thoughts, um, on which run is better. Frank Miller's Daredevil or Alan Moore's Watchmen. A lot of people have Watchmen in the number one or number two spot for best graphic, uh, novel comic, but I think Miller's Daredevil is better overall. Your thoughts. All right. So we've got uh, Frank Miller's Watchmen, 12 issues, um, and a uh, relatively safe and self-contained story. Definitely, if you add some knowledge into the Charleston characters and some of the other things, it, it adds new dimension. And as a deconstruction of superhero comics, if you, watch, if you read Watchmen cold versus you've been reading comics for a while, and then you read Watchmen, I think you get a very different you know, vibe depending on it. Um, and I think, by the way, and not to spoil the answer right out the gate, that's that's a little bit of what gives Watchmen its charm is if you are a longtime comic reader, it has a lot more dimension than not. Uh, Frank Miller's Daredevil run considered one of the the uh, you know better runs on a comic of any comic um, with a lot of depth, a lot of complexity, and a lot of uh, really intense character study. Uh, Frank Miller is um yeah it, uh, people are kind of over it but for a period uh, about last 15 years or so frank miller had uh you know aged and then there was the uh, kind of a, a rolling campaign against him uh by a number of people and so the comic publishers almost deprioritized him you know the uh you could you could find daredevil born again 
in a lot of comic shops, a lot of bookstores. It's not, and with the uh, Netflix show coming out, which you know is unlikely to fully hit on this comic series, but we'll see. Um, but with that show coming out, it is, um, you know, I, I, it, it's starting to appear in stores more now. But for a while, they kind of de-emphasized uh, Born Again. You know, um, I can't give you the exact number. I probably could if I was, uh, but off the top of my head, I couldn't give you the exact number of comics in the the in Frank Miller run. Uh, but it was a good, it was a good solid run. Um, so my answer would be, and I'm curious what what all of you think. But my answer would be the Frank Miller Daredevil run is the better uh, comic overall, and I, come, I have a couple of reasons for this. Um, first off, and, and I and some of these reasons you might not care about. I think um, you know Watchmen as a self contained story. Um, certainly very powerful, certainly, um, a lot of good elements to it. Uh, however, it, uh, it suffers a bit on two fronts. Uh, one, it, it is at its heart, a somewhat of a, a mystery story. Uh, and a lot of those tropes and a lot of kind of the, the lead up of what was going on have been used and borrowed so much by so many other forms of media over the years that it it takes a little bit away from Watchmen. If you're reading Watchmen for the first time now, um, you're going to feel big elements of it are very familiar because you, you know, that you've seen it before because you chances are you have, um, it as an original piece of work, it leans very heavily on the idea of the deconstruction of the superhero, that not all superheroes are, are good. And, you know, they'll, they'll cut various corners to do what they want. And there's an element of fascism at times to superheroes. All of these things have been explored so much as tropes and comics that it may feel a bit tired to you. Now, it's still well done. And I think the the story beats and the Dave Gibbons art and everything are are really, you know, are really well performed. And I think it, it but, you know, the the depth at which it gets to characters is still surface level. I think Alan Moore has a bit of a gift for people reading in more depth than is actually there in his, in, you know, his characters. Um, I think, you know, that you get a, you get a character study of what it means to, to have obsession, what it means to have moral equivalency, what it, you know, these, these various things, but you really don't get too much into the depth. The, the story kind of relies on you being willing to accept, you know, fairly high level surface level details as, as complexity and you know it, it's a well put together story it's well crafted it definitely benefits if you have the patience to go through all the supporting materials and the the newspaper clippings and the the various elements that that go along with the story you get kind of immersed in this world it, it feels bigger um but watchmen as a whole i think um you'd be lying to yourself a bit if you didn't admit that it it benefits from being a more unique comic of its time for being um, hyped up as a as a thorough deconstruction of the superhero genre. Elements of, I mean, even, you know, uh, Zot as an example. And that Zot bears very little resemblance to, to Watchmen. But even Zot covered some of this stuff prior to when Alan Moore did. Um, I think, I mean, and now I'm, I'm saying that, I may have the timeline wrong. But my, I guess my point is, um, Watchmen benefited from being the first major comic by a major company to come out and, and really deal with a lot of these topics and be hyped as such from DC. And so it's, it, you know, it's, it's a good comic, um, absolutely deserves its place in history. I think, um, has a certain level of overhype to it for sure. Um, what a board again, on the other hand, I think it, it's not as popular because you can't just easily pick it up and get a, you know, contained run. Uh, with Watchmen, you don't really need to know anything before you come in. It helps if you do, but, uh, you know, about superheroes in general, but you don't have any kind of research that needs to be done. You don't need to know about the character. Uh, with Daredevil Born Again, you know, knowing Foggy, knowing Karen, knowing the relationship between the Kingpin and uh, and Matt and Daredevil, um, it's definitely, it, it one, it's kind of critical to the book. Um, so I, I think... You know, it's it's harder to just pick up and read and enjoy as a casual fan. You're you're kind of committing yourself being immersed in Daredevil because Frank Miller doesn't uh, you know he doesn't create one of these runs where you know it, it's irrelevant if you don't read anything before. I mean, the the punch of uh, Karen Page selling out his identity, Matt's identity, as Daredevil 
uh, really has no weight to it. If you have no idea who Karen is and, you know, and, and all the rest, it just, it's uh, a lot of these story beats require some earlier knowledge of the character. So as a result, um, and, and quite frankly, that's the double-edged sword of it. Um, it's, it, it's harder for new readers to, to get in there and, and, you know, fully enjoy it as a new piece of work. Um, simultaneously, it's also, um, you know, it's, it's, it's better as a result, meaning, um, you know, because it has that past and that history, um, it, you know, it's, it's, it's adding something to the overall lore and character of Daredevil. And so and its strength is kind of its flaw, harder for new readers, very enjoyable for long-term readers. It, it's kind of, uh, there's an enjoyment to it. There's a, um, you know, I, I mean, it, you're, you're rewarded for caring about these characters all these years. So I, I also think that Daredevil, uh, the Frank Miller run of Daredevil and Boarding in particular, it does a pretty amazing job of fully exploring, um, you know, what, what, obsession looks like because daredevil is obsessed with figuring out who's trying to ruin his life and the people around him and it's driving him to you know more and more instability the kingpin is equally obsessed with destroying his enemy and and kind of going further and so you see um you, you know this pressure is applied to both characters you see how it creates cracks in them you see the flaws in daredevil and matt murdoch you see uh, the flaws in the kingpin, and you see how their their interpersonalities um, relate to both. So, as a, as a character study of heroism and villainy, and the links you go to achieve your goals, and all the rest, I think it does a pretty amazing job there. And uh, I recently reread it, and it 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 holds up really nicely. There's definitely some you know 80s style tropes in there that you know you you get to, and it's got a level of storytelling that's that's a little dated. But, but by and large, I, I mean, I even hate to say it that way. I, it, it's, it's good classic writing. And I think it's, uh, it's really a tremendous story. I know a lot of people, because I think I've, I've had this debate itself in the comic shop. At, I don't know if it was Watchmen and Daredevil, but it was something in Daredevil. And the hardest part for people jumping on and, and reading it is that Daredevil is often not a very exciting character for, for a lot of comic fans. And, and so it's like, I want you to commit to reading Daredevil. And if, if you just don't really like the character and you come into it, um, then you probably don't have the benefit of any of Daredevil's past. And you may be kind of tangentially aware of it, but it's just, I don't know, it just doesn't seem that exciting to you. So it's like, uh, it, it, it's been a hard sell to get people who are, you know, not that interested or, you know, benign to it to actually read it and pick it up. But for those who do and give it an honest shake, I think they, uh, they find themselves pretty amazed, pretty stunned by the series. It's a good, it's a good run. Anyway, so I would pick Daredevil, but what, what do you say? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe, of course, and thanks for listening.